This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, the Dunedin Wildlife Hospital has cared for nearly a third of New Zealand's kākāpō population so far this year. A touch of hoarfrost this morning didn't deter workers in central Otago and the Upper Clutha making early morning starts on the job. And a neglected youth-based facility will soon get an overhaul if Alexandra's Junior Youth Council gets its way. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. The Dunedin Wildlife Hospital has cared for nearly a third of New Zealand's kākāpō population so far this year. Current numbers say there are 142 of the endangered native parrots alive, with 40 birds having spent time at Dunedin's Wildlife Hospital. The lucky ones. These kākāpō are among a large flock of birds who've been cared for by the staff at Dunedin's Wildlife Hospital since the start of the year. Director and wildlife veterinarian Lisa Aguila says around a third of the living kākāpō population have come through their doors. We've cracked over 40 kākāpō coming through this hospital this year, which is an incredible number um, and quite you know, terrifying when, when you look at the numbers of the birds. There's only 142 officially in the population. They don't officially count the 72 live chicks yet. They need to prove that they can survive, so they haven't actually been incorporated into the final population numbers. Kākāpō are hand-reared at the Wildlife Hospital. Dargela says this year's breeding season has been very successful, with a large number of birds needing care at one time. At the peak of our um, involvement in February, we had 25 chicks in hospital, which is an epic number of birds, um, and it involved quite a lot of people working almost around the clock. There were some quite crazy hours, you know, a couple of hours of sleep in between, so you could catch up and then back to feeding the babies. Kākāpō are known for their cheeky temperament and inquisitive nature. And Aguila says, like human children, looking after baby birds involves long hours. She says scores of volunteers in Dunedin's Wildlife Hospital and at other centres have been working around the clock. We had at least two to three people, especially when we had the peak of 25 chicks um, per shift. So these birds have a morning and a night shift because they start at about 6 a.m. when they're quite little and then that can go through to like 2 a.m. So, so you only get a few hours of sleep after you've cleaned up. Yeah, so a huge number of people have been helping with this. It's a really, um, yeah, huge, dedicated group of conservationists and obviously my hospital team have been sort of working around the clock to help these birds now as well. And with no central government support, they're fully dependent on local businesses and the wider public for financial donations to keep the hospital operational. In Dunedin, the South Today. A meth fuel driver who caused a head-on collision near the Manuka Gorge last year has been sent to jail. 31-year-old Nicholas Taylor veered across State Highway 8 last May, crashing into an approaching car. The driver of the other vehicle spent 79 days in the hospital with multiple fractures. Taylor already had previous convictions for drugs and for poor driving, and admitted to being hooked on pee. Yesterday he was sentenced to two years and eight months imprisonment. The judge also imposed a $10,000 reparation, but says he's concerned the victim will never see a cent. Taylor already owes more than $20,000 in fines and reparations from previous offences. A, a touch of hoar frost this morning didn't deter workers in central Otago and the upper Clutha making early morning starts on the job. But for some workers, the central Otago climate is a far cry from what they're used to. Braving the freezing conditions in Wanaka this morning, workers on this vineyard soldiering on despite the impressive hoarfrost blanketing the region. Oh, we're in fog and frost, our favourite conditions. <laughs> How cold is it? Oh, I think it was about minus two driving up the road this morning, so minus two, minus one, something like that. Temperatures in Vanuatu are in their mid to high 20s at this time of year, so minus two degrees requires a fair amount of adjustment for Stuart Wilfred and his colleagues. It's really hard, but like we came here, we learned more about um, dressing up and the food and everything, and we are biting the rules. So it's it's hard, but it's good yeah. because we earn uh, more money. But it's really frost. <laughs> yeah, it's really cold. The polar conditions earning them the sympathies of workmates. 
They're a bit cold, a bit colder last week and <laughs> another day last week was even colder than this. The hoar frost made its presence felt right around the region. The pond on the golf course at Lake Hawea almost completely iced over this morning, leaving this group of ducks with a little space on which to paddle. Temperatures at Hawea flat dropping to minus four degrees. In central Otago, the south today. A new report reveals a willow tree which fell on a family on holiday in Queenstown hadn't been properly assessed or maintained. A Department of Conservation report says the department didn't assess and maintain the tree because it wasn't identified as a hazard. The willow toppled onto the family during high winds near Shotover Jet back in January. A woman suffered multiple fractures and is just starting to walk again. Her five-year-old son spent three days in Dunedin Hospital's intensive care unit. An inspection carried out by an arborist on the day of the accident found the fault in the tree was below ground level and unlikely to have been identified during standard maintenance checks. A neglected youth-based facility will soon get an overhaul if Alexandra's Junior Youth Council gets its way. The group of youngsters have hatched a plan to revitalise the Learn to Ride section of Alexandra's bike park after it fell into a state of disrepair. Looking a little worse for wear, Alexandra's bike park clearly in need of some TLC and it'll get it if the town's junior youth council gets its way. We started working on the bike park upgrade at the start of term two and meet every second Monday to work on it further. Fulton Hogan sponsors the facility and is supporting the children while they work on turning their idea into a reality and ultimately a destination where they and their peers can feel safe. We've been working with Jimmy from Fulton Hogan to see what's feasible for the bike park. The project started as a lesson on how to pitch an idea and present it for consultation. The Junior Council distributed a survey throughout schools asking their peers what they think should be done to improve the bike park. Since then it's taken on a life of its own. The choices were a tunnel, duck, fake duck pond, working traffic lights, painting the roads a bold colour and repainting the lines and some bushes put in. The top things in our voting were the tunnels, which would be really cool, and maybe some traffic lights getting done up. To help fund the upgrade of the Learn to Ride area, the Junior Youth Council will host a neon-themed disco early next month in Alexandra, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, the completion of the new Alexandra Hospital provides local school pupils with a new performance venue, and a group of Pacific Islanders showcase their culture to the Canterbury region. So see you after the break. season has changed and at Alec Campbell menswear in our three stores, Cromwell, South Dunedin and Mosgirl, we have it covered. Check out these jackets, they'll keep you warm and dry and stylish. Of course we're known for our fashion shirts, but in the winter we do have our lovely warm shirts. Look at them all. And we're known for our great range of winter knitwear too. Don't forget our stretch moleskins, six colours. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. We'll keep you warm and dry and looking just great. It's too late to sow seed, but don't despair. Ready Lawn is the answer to all your garden woes. Call Ready Lawn today on 027 228 If you're suffering from sciatica, lower back pain, hips and pelvis and knees, this technique will work wonders for you. The energy flow is transmitting through the muscles. Come and see Sunny Chin. Ricky here from Beds R Us Dunedin, your local sleep specialists. Come in and try our huge touchscreen sleep selector, taking the hard work out of choosing the right bed for you. See you here.
hard to find bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty. So if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 17 years. New doors, replacement doors and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team. When it's time to say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Step into Op Shop on St Andrew and discover a place with plenty of bargains for yourself, your friends and the whole family. We have new items arriving every day. Visit us for a fabulous range of economy and upmarket clothing, accessories, books, shoes and more. Shop with us and support your community. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a Mole Map. Mole Map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Welcome back. School pupils in Maniototo now have a new place to put on performances following the completion of the local hotel hospital. Local school children visited the hospital and rest home recently to show off their kapahaka talents to residents and staff. Maniototo Area School has a role of about 160 pupils and kapahaka is available to years three and up. The school dedicates one period a week to kapahaka performance. Among the group's routines is a Māori version of Leonard Cohen's song Hallelujah and as well as a haka. A group of Pacific Islanders in Christchurch are getting together to help put their culture on a pedestal for all to see. The members of Why Not Productions are using song and dance to promote their story across Canterbury and they say the message is catching on. <laughs> Why Not is a, it's a collective of young Pacifica artists who just had the willingness to just get together and create some work, just to share our stories. Just us as Pacifica living in New Zealand. Oh, just like a fella below me. So I'm originally from Auckland and I moved to Christchurch and I get here and I just really wanted to create some pieces of theatre. Um, so I linked up with some other like-minded young brown guys. But it's just a bunch of people who were like, yeah, I have a story I want to tell too. Like, I was like, sweet, like, let's do it. I think one of the most important things that Why Not does is it's, it's about visibility. Like, just seeing another brown person on stage is like, Yes, and that's really important, especially for our community now, because we hardly see ourselves on TV. Yeah, and so for just to have a place where people can come and hear their own stories. We get one weekend to celebrate being Polynesian, and it's Polyfest. Polyfest, yeah. That's the only Pacifica event in Christchurch. Mm -hmm. Like, how crazy is that for a culturally diverse country? I don't have my language um, and for ages I was like this is so rude I blame my parents I blame my grandparents because they can all speak and I've seen them have their conversations in Samoan and like a, it's an obvious decision like they'll speak in, in private without us hearing and for ages it was like why and so I asked my grandfather about it and he was just like we just had to we moved from Samoa to New Zealand and the goal was to move to New Zealand to be New Zealanders right and so they sent their kids to school and they'd speak Samoan and then at the school the children were getting told off or beaten for speaking in Samoan and so one, once they were at home um, my grandfather was like we just 
we, we can't have that anymore. We have to speak English only in order for them to be able to survive and adapt to New Zealand life. But we're in a position now that we're, we don't have to settle for that. You know, they've paid that price. We're, in order to settle, you have to give something up, you know, and they compromised culture and language and paved the way for us to do what we want. And now we're in a position to regain that. So in a way, we're going full circle. The financial side of it, man, it's hard, eh? Like, I always, we, we always joke around, we always throw around with each other. We're like, it's for the craft, it's for the craft. And then we're going, yeah, but it's a poor man's game, but it's a poor man's game. Like, but I'm hungry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, because um, we're a new collective and a lot of us are just fresh out. Like, you know, like I was saying, Albany just graduated last year. Um, Mana, Mana has, he's now starting to perform. Uh, our musos, uh, they, they're just amazing musicians who are keen to play for us. We'll do a show, we'll get a koa, we'll charge a koha. Whatever we make from there, we make it work. You know, that, that's the whole point. Of, mm. Yeah, it's like yeah. A, a big deal for us in terms of our work is we try to make it accessible um, because we know that a lot of the people, a lot of our people won't go out of their way because theatre is expensive. Even if you're spending like $20 a ticket, that, yeah. that imagine like $20 a ticket. That's a mouth to feed, you know? Neighbor. Yeah. That, so uh, the goal for us is to make it accessible. So we try and perform anywhere community friendly, whether that may be the community hall or the classroom at Raleigh. <laughs> After the break on the South today, we find out who's leading the Dunedin Premier Rugby competition in tonight's rugby chat. And we have tomorrow's weather for you, so stay with us. Young dancers of the present and of the future, my last word is to you. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. At the Hard to Find Bookshop, we sell quality books on all subjects from the rare to the recent. And where viable, we will come to you. We have a great reputation for integrity and honesty. So if you're downsizing or sorting an estate and have books to sell, contact us. The season has changed and at Alec Campbell Menswear in our three stores, Cromwell, South Dunedin and Mosgill, we have it covered. Check out these jackets, they'll keep you warm and dry and stylish. Of course we're known for our fashion shirts, but in the winter we do have our lovely warm shirts. Look at them all. And we're known for our great range of winter knitwear too. Don't forget our stretch moleskins, six colours. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. We'll keep you warm and dry and looking just great. Step into Ross Cafe, located at Ross Home in North East Valley. We have a great range of hot and cold food, friendly service and a warm atmosphere that you are sure to enjoy. We look forward to serving you soon at Ross Cafe. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. If you're suffering from sciatica, lower back pain, hips and pelvis and knees, this technique will work wonders for you. The energy flow is transmitting through the muscles. Come and see Sunny Chin. It's too late to sow seed, but don't despair. Ready Lawn is the answer to all your garden woes. Call Ready Lawn today on 027 22 88 
thanks for staying with us. It's getting towards the pointy end of Dunedin Premier Club Rugby. In this week's Rugby Chat, Paul Dwyer discusses this weekend's matchups with Tyree Eels, Joss Casey and Vinnie O'Connell. Right, boys, let's talk about the games this weekend. Um, so, and there's, there's, some, there's a, well, there's, I don't think there's too, they're not too hard to pick. Harbour versus Kike, and Kike have got to go down to Harbour. So, Vinnie, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'll probably go with Kike with that one. Just with, um, I think they get Christian and Patrick McCarran are both back for them this week, from what I heard. And one of them was yeah. away and one of them was injured, but yeah. I think you might be right, they might both be back. And yeah. they do, but they're, they're a couple of pretty solid footballers. Yeah, I think Harbour get a few back as well, but I think, yeah, the Logan Allen factor is a big one for that, but yes, I'll go with Kike. What are you thinking? Oh. Uh, I'm leaning harbour from I heard they've got a few boys coming back. I think going down there it's tough. And it's always hard to win down stuff. there. I think Ryan Nicholas will have them right up for it, and I think it'll be very close. But I'll lean harbour. Okay. Yeah. Um, Southern and University, Vinny. Yeah, uni. Just the way they've been travelling. Yeah, I, I can't see Southern getting up for it, but. Yeah, you never know, but yeah, I'm pretty safe. With they're struggling for they're struggling for players. They've lost a whole front row. Yeah, yeah. tough. What do you think? What do you think, Basti? Yeah. Basti, yeah. Okay, we've got uh, Zingers up against Dunedin. Two of the also Rands. Winnie, what are you thinking? Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll go Dunedin. Good for them third one of the year. What do you think? Is that game at the at Dunedin or? No, it's up at the, it's up at the uh, it's up at Bastion Point. Yeah, I'll lean Dunedin, but I don't think there'll be much in it. Okay, and the last game. Um, again, I've learned you're getting better though from my spies tell me they just about got a full complement back. So and they've had a really tough run of injuries this year. So Alain Brienne and Green Island? Yeah, I'll go Green Island, but I think that game will be closer than what other, a lot of people expect. Yeah, yeah I'll lean Green Island, but yeah, Alain I, I said it after we played them earlier in the year, the second round, and they nearly toppled us. Yeah, they were I said close, they'll, they'll they? go on and topple someone, and then a few, a few weeks later, quite quick 70 on them. So I don't really know how to read them, but. I would favour GI because they're the importance of the game for them. But well, if they, I mean, they, well, look, I think they've gone anyway. But if they lose that, well, they're yeah. they are toast. Yeah. So there it is. Um, so look, there it is. Look, I'll just give you a bit of a read from my point of view on those games. Um, I've even lost the game. So Harbour, so Harbour Kite. Yeah, look, I look, I'm I'm thinking Kite, but I might go Harbour by one. Uh, University far too strong for Southern. They'll win 13 plus. Dunedin should get the well get a win over the line. But I'd only go 12 and under in that game, and Green Island should be too strong, 13 plus. Uh, we might have to put uh, Rugby Chat on hold for a couple of weeks. I'm having an operation early next week. It's nothing serious, so unfortunately you'll get me back here, but uh, I could be off for a couple of weeks, and we'll talk to you again soon. It took just 15 minutes for firefighters to bring a well-involved garage fire under control in Invercargill yesterday afternoon, the latest in a string of fires in the last few weeks. Two fire appliances from Invercargill Fire Station were sent out to a Dome Street property in the suburb of Newfield at around 1.30 after multiple calls were received about a garage on fire. Emergency services say there were chemicals in the garage at the time but the fire hadn't reached them. They say the owners had managed to turn off the power supply to the garage which they're encouraging people to do in the event of a fire. The blaze was one of a spate of fires in Invercargill in the past few weeks. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South today. The Dunedin Wildlife Hospital has cared for nearly a third of New Zealand's kākāpō population so far this year, with the team working long hours. A touch of hoar frost this morning didn't deter workers in central Otago and the upper Clutha, making early morning starts on the job. And a neglected youth-based cycling facility will soon get an overhaul if Alexandra's Junior Youth Council gets its way. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Barry Stewart. What have you got for Hello, us Hello Melissa. Tomorrow? Some good stories tomorrow. Draft master plan for, for Frankton has been published and it signals a monumental change for the Queenstown suburb over the next uh, three decades. So look out for that. Uh, a new uh, ombudsman report details some concerns about uh, staff behaviour at the Targa prison. We have a story on that. And the long battle to lower the speed limit uh, in, Port, in Port Chalmers is, along Port Chalmers' main street is a step closer to being won. So that's uh, to take it from uh, 50, I think it is, to 30. So um, 
if it's a happening there. Invercargill's only coin-operated uh, parking metres are soon to be put to rest. Uh, and uh, exciting news in, uh, in Omaru, up to $35 million investment uh, has been proposed for the Omaru Harbour uh, as the public has a first peek at possible plans for the area, so we have details. Wonderful, so you can catch all of Thank that you. in tomorrow's ODT. And now it's time for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by MoleMap. Starting with our southern view, a typical winter's day in sunny Dunedin with a beautiful example of Art Deco architecture. Looking at the situation, an intense anti-cyclone will move towards the North Island tomorrow with westerly airflow so slowly increase, increasing over southern districts tomorrow and Saturday ahead of a change to warmer northerly airflow on Sunday. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, Greymouth and Westport can expect clouds and 12 degrees. Across to the northeast, Nelson and Blenheim are likely to have clear skies and 13 degrees. Moving to Canterbury, plan for another clear sky winter's day. Cold in the morning and night, but pleasant during the day, 12 in Kaikoura, 11 in Christchurch and at Ashburton. Looking at the southern towns, Catlins, Belclutha, Lumsden and Gore can all look forward to moderate westerlies with some cloud and a high of 10. Travelling westward to the central lakes, Wanaka and Alexandra are in for clear skies and moderate westerlies with highs of 9. The same for Queenstown, just a bit cooler with 7 and it'll be cloudy with fresh westerlies in Tiana with a double digit high of 10. Looking to the northern towns along the coast, Timaru and Omaru are in for clear skies and light winds with a high of 11 and it's a bit chillier inland for Twaizu and Amarama with clear skies, moderate westerlies and a high of just 7 degrees. In Dunedin, fine and cold with frost and a chilly overnight low of minus 3. It should be fine tomorrow and Saturday with high cloud, pleasant during the day but cold at night. Friday sees a high of 13 and a low of 2 and it's 12 and 3 for Saturday. Heading to Invercargill, looking at cloud tonight with an overnight low of 3. It will be mostly cloudy over the next two days with moderate to fresh westerlies. Friday's temperatures range from 12 to 5 and Saturday brings a high of 12 and a low of 6. And that's all for our news this Thursday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz and follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.